Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. November 28, 2020, the What is Risk edition. First up from the New York Times, in the records released with the Purdue Pharmacy guilty plea, and there were numerous uh, interesting documents, uh, particularly around uh, McKinsey & Company, the world's most prestigious consulting firm. The 160 pages include emails and slides revealing new details about McKinsey's advice to the Sackler family and the firm's notorious plan to turbocharge OxyContin sales at a time when opioid abuse was already killing hundreds of thousands of Americans. In a 2017 presentation, uh, McKinsey laid out several options, options to shore up OxyContin sales. One was to give Purdue's distributors a rebate for every overdose attributable to pills they sold. I'd ask you to think about what kind of incentive is that where you're giving rebates to basically kill people via overdoses. So um, McKinsey certainly not looking too good uh, with that bit of information released. Next up from the Wall Street Journal, wary of lockdowns, (laughs) CFOs stand ready with COVID 2021 contingency plans. Finance chiefs say they are wary of new lockdowns aimed at curbing the spread of the coronavirus but have contingency plans ready in contrast with the spring when they were completely caught off guard. With confirmed infections exceeding 100,000 daily and hospitalizations topping 88,000, and of course, the Trump administration admitting and even pulling back from trying to do anything uh, to slow down the crisis. Um, States are revising earlier moves to loosen regulations, and this prospect is worrying business leaders even though another federal lockdown appears less likely. President-elect Biden said he won't consider such an order uh, necessary. Um, And, of course, Trump even uh, criticizes states who tried to do something, really pointing out just the invidiousness of Trump and his entire administration around the COVID crisis. (laughs) So CFOs say they are getting ready. Next up, uh, and here's a blast from the past. Uh, from the Wall Street Journal, the resurrection of the office phone call. Uh, the COVID pandemic has brought back an old-fashioned mode of communication that many millennial workers used to shun, and it's a happy medium between Zoom and instant messages. What's it called? The phone call. Imagine that. A phone call is in many ways a happy medium. It's perfect for one-on-one discussions and has just the same richness as a video call without overwhelming you with visual information. Uh, people t- uh, tend to think that uh, if you have a one-on-one call, you're going to have a more richer and fuller call than if you have a um, virtual call uh, where you're going to focus on the uh, many of the visual. So uh, it's interesting that the um, humble phone call would make a comeback here in the uh, coronavirus health crisis. <laughs> and then finally, if you're a CCO, I would ask you to think about what's risk And what's a new risk model for your company as General Motors has announced plans to seek a banking charter to grow its auto lending business? The lending arm is drawing up plans uh, uh, to have one which would allow it to accept deposits and expand it to auto financing. GMAC, or GMFC rather, has been talking to federal and state banking regulators for months about forming an industrial loan corporation. So, uh, what's interesting is what kind of regs would this put on, new regs would this put on uh, GM? Well, how about from the Fed or the OCC? The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.